day everyone. We are the group 2 and we are assigned to discuss about the facilities and equipments in basketball. Since we all know that basketball is one of the most popular game around the world, there's a lot of people who wants to learn about basketball. So in this video, we'll talk about the facilities and equipments in basketball. So first, we'll talk about the facilities. The number one is the basketball court. In basketball, the basketball court is the playing surface consisting of a rectangular floor with baskets at each end. Indoor basketball courts are almost always made of polished wood, usually made of maple. So with 3.048 meters and a 10 feet high rims on each basket, outdoor surfaces are generally made from started paving materials such as concrete or asphalt. So these are the parts of the basketball court. First is the free throw line, second is the three point line, third is the side lines and base lines, and fourth is the center jump circle, and lastly is the division line. So now we have the free throw line. So the free throw lane. The free throw lane is a rectangle in a team's front court and used to line up players during a free throw. And the standard free throw lane in, is 19 feet long and 12 feet wide. So the player shooting the free throw stands at the top of the lane, while other players stand in the marked spots along each side of the lane. On offense, players may not stand in the lane for more than 3 seconds unless they are making a move to the basket with the ball. In NBA, defensive players may not be in the lane for more than 3 seconds unless they are actively guarding an offensive player. The free throw lane is sometimes referred to as the paint or the key. Next is the three point line. The three point line is a semicircle that surrounds the basket area on each team side of the court. Players who stand behind the line and make a field goal are given three points instead of the standard two points for a regular field goal. In high school, in women's college basketball, the three-point line is 19 feet and 9 inches from the center of the basketball hoop. In men's college basketball, the line is 20 feet inches away. In the NBA, it stands 23 feet and 9 inches from the hoop at the top of the arc and 22 feet at the sidelines. Next is the sidelines and baselines. The sidelines and baselines of a basketball court mark the outside boundaries for out-of-bounds purposes. The sideline runs the length of the court and the baseline are behind each basket. And next is the center jump circle. The center jump circle is where the game action starts. It has a radius of 6 feet. Two jumpers of each team must Stand outside the circle until the ball is tipped. And last is the division line. Division line. The division line is the line running the width of the middle of the court that divides into two equal sections. In high school and college, a team has a 10 seconds to get the ball across into the division line, also known as half court. In the NBA or National Basketball Association, the time is requirement is eight seconds so now let's proceed to the equipments in basketball which are the backboard basketball hoop scoreboard shot clocks basketball jersey basketball shoes basketball shorts shooting sleeves towels wristbands rings and rims whistles mouth guard headbands and basketball socks so first we have the backboard Backboard is a piece of basketball equipment. It is raised vertical board with an attached basketball consisting of a net suspended from a hoop. It is made of a flat rig piece of often plexiglass or tempered glass which also has the properties of safety glass when accidentally shattered. Next is the basketball. The basketball or 
the ball used in playing basketball. So obviously, you'll need a ball to play the game. So today, basketballs are made with synthetic materials such as rubber, polyester, and nylon in combination with leather. In the NBA, the pressure of the ball must be between 7.5 and 8.5 pounds per square inch. The size of the ball measures 29.5 inches around in circumference. And there are also smaller sizes you can get for kids of various ages ranging from 5 to 12. Next is the scoreboard. Scoreboard. A basketball scoreboard will at the minimum display the time left in a period and both teams scores. The last minute of each quarter is usually displayed with tenths of a seconds, which is required in FIBA, NBA since 1989, and NCAA since 2001. And next is the shot clock. Shot clock. A shot clock is a device that is used to keep track of the amount of the time the offense is allowed to have the ball. The shot clock lasts 24 seconds in the NBA and 30 seconds in the college basketball. If the time runs out without a shot being taken, it is a shot clock violation. You can connect a shot clock to the backboard so it will light up red when the time expires. Next is the basketball jersey. Basketball jerseys, the jersey is important to a player identity on the court. It includes your name on the back and a number on the both and front and back that identify who you are. On the front of a jersey is your team's logo and the branding. Next is the basketball shoes. Basketball shoes. For someone planning on playing basketball, the shoes are the most essential piece of equipment. Although, basketball can be played in regular sneakers. A good pair of shoes will give you an edge on the court while providing extra safety. Their stability will allow you to move literally and perform quick cuts to beat defensive players. Unfortunately, not all shoes are created equal and you should try them on the store to make sure they fit comfortably. Next is the basketball short. And for basketball shorts, are a vital piece of clothing that basketball players wear when competing in the sports with a wide range of colors, types, brands, and material available. There are many options for basketball players or those interested in this type of short for leisure to purchase. Thank you. Next is the basketball socks. Basketball socks. You may not think socks are important, but they prevent friction between your feet and your shoes. Having a nice pair of socks will prevent blisters from forming on your heels and toes. There is also a decision to be made between long socks or short socks. You should decide based on which you are most comfortable wearing and how you look in them. Next is the basketball headbands. Basketball headband. If you want to add a unique look to your personal style on the court, Try adding a headband. You can rock a traditional cotton sweatband or use a branded dry fit bandana. Whichever style you choose, you're going to look great and stop the sweat from interfering with your game. Next is basketball shooting sleeves. Shooting sleeves. Another optional piece of attire is an arm sleeve, also known as compression sleeve. This article of clothing not only looks good, but it aids muscle recovery on and off the court. Next is basketball towel. Towels. If you sweat a lot, you'll want to bring a towel to the game. Towels are a great way to quickly wipe away sweat and get back to the court. Sweat rolling down your hands or into your eyes can be a major setback on the court. Next is basketball mouth guard. Basketball mouth guard. Mouth guards cover your teeth to protect teeth and gums, custom fitted to your feet better than over the counter mouth guards. Next is basketball wristbands. Wristbands. Basketball wristbands are yet another type of non essential equipment that may help you while giving you some on court style. You see most basketball players using rubber wristbands 
with a message or meaning during games. Although cloth wristbands can be also be worn to help control sweat while playing. Next is basketball ring and rims. Basketball rings and rims. The rim is a metal ring with an 18 inch diameter. It is attached to the backboard 10 feet above the ground. There are two types of basketball rims, single and double rims. Single rims are the most popular on indoor courts and are used in almost all organized leagues. And last is the whistle. And for the whistles, in basketball, whistles are used by referees and are used to signal the start of play, end of play, foul, timeout. The referee may also use the whistles to give a short notice before a dead ball period ends, such as to break the team up there, huddle during timeout. That's all. Thank you. So that's all. Thank you for watching.